Right, so welcome to a new guide on this channel and on this occasion is the Miniverse from Cherry Audio. Now this is not a review, it's a deep dive about this synth. So everything on this guide is in chapters. So if you look at the description or the timeline, you can jump to a section or skip the ones you don't want. Now, if you like this guide, like and subscribe, please. And if you have the money, you can buy me a coffee if you want. Everything is on the description. Okay, so let's just begin. Now, this is the mock take, the mini mock take of on the of Cherry Audio, right? So just a classic, very classic synthesizer. Now, if uh, I am assuming that you're learning and this may be your first synthesizer, if that is the case, you made the right decision. This is a classic that you need to learn when you start learning synthesis. Now, if you do have some experience Experience or some knowledge about uh, how envelopes work or maybe filters and you know some of the common parts sometimes you're gonna get a little bit bored so you can skip the sections or just you know advance or move forward uh, to a, maybe a different part you can do that but I am assuming that you're starting so I'm gonna go slow and explain everything that goes goes on right here okay so right from the start if you go to new right here at the top you can start a new patch and by default this is gonna be loud and I mean loud so I'm gonna go down in volume and I'm always gonna start from a default patch now the first thing we need to discuss is going to be the oscillators so you get three oscillators and they are all different from each other uh, by a tiny little bit. Uh, first, we're going to go to the first oscillator. Now, on each oscillator, you can turn it on and you can modify the volume of each. And right here you have the control. So in this case, is the, the first one is on, the second one it's on. I'm going to turn them off and they are all off. So when I play a key, nothing is happening. Notice that we just we get just nothing. So for now, I'm just going to go uh, to the number one and just going to enable. And on this one, we just can manage the volume of that oscillator. And it is still a little bit loud. It's a very loud uh, plugging. So with each oscillator, you can uh, change the range right here. If I play a key, you can go to 32s, which is going to be low. Maybe I'm going to go to this one, low. You can go higher, higher, higher and higher. So you have your, all your different ranges right there. Then you have uh, the waveform. And on the waveform, you can go and select the triangle. You have a tri-saw. The next one is gonna be a saw, square. Now it's gonna be a pulse, a narrow, it's just a narrow version of the same thing you have right here. Let me go down volume. And then you have a more narrow, right? So this is very simple. You have your basic waveforms, and then you just can choose, can choose the, the range. Now the other oscillators are pretty much the same, but they uh, they have tiny differences. On this one, and um, I'm gonna turn off this one, turn on the second one, and on this one, you get the same thing. You go to lows, which is uh, low frequency, then 32, 16, 8, 4, and 2. So, yeah, same thing. In terms of waveforms, you have the same exact waveforms you have on the first one. Now, the difference is that on this one, you have a frequency control, so this, means that you can change the frequency of this oscillator. So you can detune it. You can go up or you can go down in pitch. So of course you get this one because you can be playing the first one on this pitch and then you can be playing the second one and play intervals. Now, if you double click it, it's going to let you uh, enter the value. In this case, I'm going to say zero. And now this one is going to be really aligned with the first one. So if we play it, notice that the waveforms are going to be interacting. And now Cherry Audio did a very good job into, uh, in, in emulating, uh, you know, the oscillators and the sound. Now what you can do, you can just offset it a little bit and you're going to get, uh, you know, a bigger sound. That's something very common that we do on, on this, uh, you know, on the synthesizer. So I'm going to turn on the third oscillator and leave the other ones off. So we are just going to be getting, uh, you know, the third one. Now the third one, it's pretty much the same, but this one is really important for us. Now we can still do the same range, but we can go to low frequency. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And again, we can modify the frequency, right? Now, the waveforms are a little bit different. We get the triangle, you know, we get the same, the other ones, but right here, instead of getting the tri-saw, we get a saw. Now, the thing is that this one is gonna be a ramp down, and the other one is gonna be a ramp up, and this will be important when we talk about modulation. And then you get the same, you know, uh, the same waveforms, let me go here, you get exactly the same waveforms. The only difference right here is that uh, you get an inverted saw instead of the tri-saw. 
So right here you have this button, maybe it's a little bit weird. So uh, what this can do, this can disconnect the keyboard from your oscillator. It will be really important when we talk about modulation because we can use this oscillator as an LFO. Now, right now we are using the third oscillator. So if I play a key, notice that we are not getting Whatever I'm playing, notice I'm right here on the on the keyboard. If I play this, we get that pitch. But if I play different keys, we are not getting that pitch. And it's because this button, what it does, it will disconnect the oscillator number three from the keyboard. So it's receiving no instruction. It's just, uh, you know, triggering the envelope and letting the sound pass when we play a key. But it doesn't care which key we are playing. It's playing always the same frequency. So in this case, if we play whatever key, we're gonna get the same. So we need to manage the frequency or the pitch with this control. Now this is cool, but this will be really important when we go to low frequency mode because we can use this as an LFO, like I said before. Now still, if you don't want this and you want to use this oscillator as a standard oscillator, when you go right here, you can just turn it on. And now let me just go right there. It will listen to the pitch. So now this oscillator works like the other ones. And you can easily go right here, turn the three oscillators on, and you're gonna get a big sound. And you can just, you know, choose different waveforms and just, you know, make a collage of different sounds. So let's move on to the next thing, uh, the noise and the input volume, which is the overload. Uh, for this one, I'm gonna start a new patch. Now, this is very important on the hardware unit as well, because we can get saturation. So I'm gonna start with new, but remember this one is really loud, so I'm gonna go down on the, in the volume. So I'm gonna turn everything off, right? So everything is off. So if I play a key, nothing happens. So uh, if we go there, right here, we have the noise. If we turn it on, we just get noise. And you have two choices. You can control the volume right here, of course, but then you have white noise and you have pink noise. Right, so you can still turn on your oscillators and have a combination of the, uh, you know, the waveforms and, and the noise. Now I'm gonna turn off the noise because again, it's just pretty simple, uh, pretty simple control. It's just noise. Uh, we need to talk about the input volume and the overload. So on the hardware unit, uh, this doesn't do anything. Now, the thing is that what you can do, you can connect at the back and it's at the back. We don't see it right here. Uh, we can connect whatever signal or maybe uh, the same signal of the synthesizer of this synthesizer and feed it back to the synth itself. So what you will get in that case is going to be a saturation, right? So that's what you get. So right now, since this is an emulation, we have no chance of connecting a cable back to, you know, to the same synth. Everything is virtual. So you have two choices right here. You have feedback and you have sidechain. So feedback is like taking the cable from the output of the synthesizer, maybe the headphones, and feed it back to this synth at the back panel. So that's what we, what we do on feedback. And this is what we'll do, it will give us saturation. So I'm gonna be doing something like that, still very loud. Notice that the overload, overload is just telling us, dude, you're getting that, that signal. And as I go up, we are gonna be getting saturation. It's gonna distort. And you can do mild, you can go, you know, mild, or you can go really aggressive, and it's gonna really give you, you know, a lot of saturation. Now remember that the sound that comes out of the synthesizer, it's important because this is what you're, whatever you comes out of here is what you're feeding back to the synth to get the saturation. Now the other option is going to be sidechain. Now this is a, you know, is a feature because it's a BS, is a VST, uh, it's a DAW, right? So sidechain is talking about the DAW sidechain. So let me give you an example. I have a different channel. This one has the Miniverse and the other one has a Paul synth, which is just a different synthesizer. And this one, what it is doing is just playing a chord, right? Just a C chord. Now, but it's outputting some sound. I'm gonna go all the way down in volume. So this is going to output something, but we can listen to whatever this is doing. So I'm gonna go right here to the Miniverse and I'm gonna be selecting a side chain. If I go to the pulse synth, which is this channel, right? This one we have right here. And I uh, choose what we want to listen. Notice that the pre is outputting sound and the out is outputting sound. So if I go right there, 
and I go back to the miniverse, since we are in sidechain, whatever sound we are uh, we get right here is going to be is going to be fed back right here to the synthesizer. So now if I play a key, notice that we get a combination of whatever that comes out from here and the oscillators. If I turn off the oscillators, we can still hear this sound on this synthesizer. So yeah, it's like we are inputting whatever other sound to this synth. Now the cool thing is that we can use the cutoff the resonance and the volume and everything else so we can you know this goes the sound goes through the circuit and still if we wanted to we can bring the oscillator one and two and have you know cool sounds So that's the main purpose of the feedback and the chain. The feedback, you're feedbacking the sound that comes out of the synthesizer to the synthesizer and a side chain, you're gonna be uh, feedbacking or not feedbacking, uh, inputting uh, sound from whatever other source. All right, so back to a new patch. I'm gonna go down in volume because it's gonna be loud and we need to talk about the loudness contour. Now, remember what I said well, What I said before, if you're starting, this is gonna be uh, gold inf <laughs> golden information for you, but if you have a little bit of, a little bit of experience, uh, this one is gonna be a little bit boring. I'm gonna explain how uh, an envelope works. Right, so we have some sound. We have the first one, I'm gonna turn everything off. I'm gonna leave the first one on, just the first oscillator. It doesn't matter, right, right now, it just doesn't matter this. So we need to talk about this. I'm gonna go all the way down on all the different knobs, all the way down. So if I play something and I'm playing it right now, can we can see that there's no volume, nothing, it's happening. And it's because the loudness contour is gonna uh, control is the amp is gonna control how the volume goes out of the synthesizer, gonna shape it. So if all the, the knobs are down, nothing comes out. So you have uh, three main uh, dedicated knobs. You have the attack time, decay, and sustain. Now the attack and the decay are time-based uh, controls. The sustain is a level. So right now I play a key, nothing happens. So it would be wonderful to get some sound. If I go to the attack time, this is what uh, first what it will do. It will decide how long it's gonna take for, to go when we play a key from full silence all the way to full, to, you know, do all the way up to the maximum amplitude. So if I go right there and do something like this, you can see that it says 700 milliseconds, maybe 800, something like that. And as you keep going up, keep going up, it's just gonna be longer and longer. But it, the important thing right here is that it says milliseconds, it's about time. So if I maybe do something like that and I play a key, now we get some volume, now we, we get something, but it dies right away. We're gonna see why in a minute. So if you go right there, it's gonna take about five seconds, so we can see the, the volume, the sound growing from silence, full silence, all the way to full amplitude. And as you go all over the top, all the way up, it's gonna take a long time to go from full silence all the way up. So this is what the attack is going to say. How long is gonna take to go from full silence to all the way up in volume. Now I'm gonna maybe put it right here. It's gonna be relatively short. If I play a key, it's gonna go up in full, and then it's gonna die, right? It's gonna go up, starts uh, silence, go up, and then at some point it's gonna die. But notice that I'm still playing a key right here. Why is the sound dying, right? It just dies. And it's because we need to talk about the decay. So the attack is going to decide how long it's going to take to go from full silence all the way to, uh, you know, the maximum volume. So the decay is going to decide how long it's going to take to go down. So if I do some decay, we are going to be able to hear this. I'm going to play a key and sustain it. It's going to go up and then it's going to go down, but this time it's just not dying right away, right? It's just taking a little bit of time. And it's because, again, this is a time-based knob. It takes almost about a second uh, to go to back to full silence. If I go really uh, aggressively, uh, I'm gonna go up, and then it's gonna, be, it's gonna go down very slowly, but I'm still holding a key, right? I'm not releasing the key. So this is what the decay is going to uh, decide, how long it's gonna take to go down. So what happens if I don't want for the decay uh, to decide when to go down, right? I'm gonna play a key, I'm holding it, I don't want it to go down to full silence, right? I don't want this. I'm gonna make it shorter to go up. It's gonna go down, but I don't want this. 
I want for the sound to stop or sustain at some point. So this is going to be the sustain. As I go up, notice it says percentage. It gives, a, gives you a percentage. It's not a time-based control. So as I go up, this is what will decide. It will decide when we want to stay or where we want to stay in terms of level when we hold a key. That's why it's called sustain. So uh, in this case, I'm going to maybe put it right there. So this is going to go up very slowly. It's going to go down very slowly, but then it's going to encounter, it's going to just kind of a bump uh, with the sustain and it's going to sustain at some point. It will never go down to false silence because we are doing a little bit of sustain. If I play a key, goes up. Now let me just uh, do a longer attack. If I play it, it's going to go up very slowly. Then it's going to go down because it enters the decay stage. But since we uh, are saying that we want to stay somewhere in between, it's going to stay right there. And this is going to be the stain. If we wanted to, we can adjust this and it's just going to be going down. Notice it's going down very slowly, but it's going. If I go all the way up, it's going to go all the way up. So this is an important thing that you need to know with the sustain. So let's say that again, we have a slow attack and we have a low, uh, just kind of a slowish decay. But the sustain, it's all the way up. If I play a key, it's gonna go up and it will stay up there. It will never go down. Let me just uh, chop the high frequencies. It's never, it will never go down because if the sustain is all the way up, we are disabling the decay time. There's no decay because the sustain is all the way up. So if I do something like this, again, we have the same example done before. It's gonna go up very slowly. It's gonna go down because we entered the decay and we are sustaining right here. So the question is, what is going to happen when we release a key? So uh, in this case, we need to talk about the decay option. Now, usually uh, today, most synthesizers, they have an ADSR. You know, we have a release knob. So the release, what it means is, uh, is what it's going to happen when we release a key. And right now, when we release a key, I'm going to do something like that, maybe. When we release a key, I play it. We are sustaining. I'm going to release it in three, two, one. The sound dies, but it's, it dies slowly, right? It's go, it slowly goes down. So that's going to be the release. What's going to happen or how long it's going to take to go to full silence when we release the key. Release it in three, two, one slowly goes down. And this is because we have this decay option that says on. In the case of the mock, uh, this decay, what it will do, it will use whatever time you have on your decay as a release. On other synthesizers, you have an independent release control. So, you know, you don't need to use this decay option. So if this button is on, on the on side, uh, what it's going to happen is that the release is going to be whatever you have under your decay. It's going to use the same time you have right here. I release it, it goes down smoothly. If I turn this off, we don't have our release anymore. So if I play a key, we have a slow attack. And let me just do it a little bit obvious. We have a slow attack. We have a slow decay. We have a sustain. But I'm going to release the keys in three, two, one. It dies instantly. We have no release. So this is what the decay knob means. If you want a release, something like that, it has a tail, you need to use the decay on. If you don't want that, the sound is going to die as soon as you release the key. Right, so let's move on to the filter. So on the filter, we have something right here. You know, we have an envelope, attack, decay, and sustain, and it's the same thing as this. So if you don't know how, uh, how the envelopes uh, work, go to the previous section. I explained everything there. But first, we need to learn what all of this means, and especially the keyboard control. I'm gonna go down in volume because it's gonna be loud and I'm gonna just play one single oscillator, right? And still, you know, we can see it right here in the spectrum. Now we can be, we're gonna be able to see it right here. Right, so if I play a key and I'm gonna play and play it and sustain it, we have the cutoff frequencies. So this one is gonna be your cutoff. It's gonna cut high frequencies. And this is why this is called, this type of synthesis or this synthesizer is called a subtractive synth because you are just chopping the frequencies you don't want. You create some tones, you know, something like that. And then you just cut what you don't need. 
uh, you're going to be able to cut the high frequencies. Nowadays, some synthesizers, uh, they give you the option to cut, to cut the low frequencies, but this, uh, we don't have it in this one, we just can cut high. Alright, so this is what we will get, we are going to be chopping high frequencies. Now then you have the other control. This control is going to be uh, the resonance or the emphasis. In this case it's called emphasis, but uh, nowadays we call it the resonance. So this is going to be a bump on the breakpoint. Notice that when we move this, this, we're cutting right there. You know, we can see the slope right there. So this will create a bump right there, right at the breakpoint. We can really see it right there. Now, uh, this type of filter, uh, the one we are using on, you know, the one the Mog uses, is a ladder filter. Now, one thing that you need to know with ladder filters is that when you go up on the resonance, you are going to be losing a little bit of low frequencies. If I, let me just bring a little bit more, and I'm going to go low on that one. So we are just chopping, and if I go up, we are getting that peak, but notice that the low, the lows are just going down. So we lose some lows. This is normal. Don't panic. Now when you go really up on the resonance, you're going to get this self-oscillating, oscillation type of sound. It's going to start self-oscillating. So you're going to get a tone. Right. So that's it. That's your cutoff. You're going to cut high frequencies and on this one, you can add a bump right there. Okay, so now we need to talk about the keyboard control. And this is really important. So right now, I'm gonna turn this off and turn this one off. So they are both off. I'm gonna play a key, and uh, maybe I'm gonna be just using one single, one single one, because it's gonna be a little bit obvious. And I'm gonna maybe put it right here. So we are cutting a lot of high frequencies. And I'm doing a, a, you know, a lot of uh, emphasis, so we can see the peak right here. Okay. So the keyboard control will adjust the cut of frequencies depends on the key you're playing. That's pretty much what's going on. And let me show you, uh, if I play a low key, we can see that the bump, the resonance is right here. And if I play a higher key, the resonance, it's not moving. Notice that we always, this is stuck in the same place. And this is normal. So this means that it doesn't care if we play high keys or we play low keys. It just doesn't care. It's not going to adjust the cutoff frequencies. So if you're playing low keys, well, that's fine. You're going to get your main uh, frequencies right here. But if you're if you're playing high keys, you're going to lose a lot of your high frequencies because you're doing a lot of cutoff. So that's why you get the keyboard control. The keyboard control will uh, modify the cutoff frequencies and adjust it. Uh, depending on which key you're playing. And you have two main options. The first one is going to be one third of an octave, and the second one, this, is going to be two thirds of an octave. So it's a little bit less aggressive, a lot of more aggressive, and if both are on, it's gonna be full <laughs> aggressive. So I'm gonna be doing it this with just one single, you know, with the first one, with the uh, one third of an octave. If I uh, play now, I play a low key, we are stuck right there on the resonance. If I go up, notice it's moving now. It's not stuck on the same spot when I go up in pitch. When I play higher keys, it's moving. And it's because it's listening to uh, the frequency of the key, you know, which keys we are playing. And it's adjusting the cut of frequencies so we can hear the higher frequencies a little bit more. Now, this is a very mild one. What happens if I bring the other one? The other one, uh, I'm going to do a little bit more, it's going to be a little bit more aggressive. This one. Now this is a lot more aggressive, and it's moving a lot more. So this is what the keyboard control does, and it's a very standard feature that you get in a lot of synthesizers, it's a very common thing. So once you learn it, you know what it does. Now in this case, we're using one of the other ones, but you can go full on, and now it's going to be a lot more aggressive. And if I, notice if I play a higher key, I'm going to bring more to the table. And I do a lot of cutoff. We can hear the high keys. If I turn this off, it's going to be really dark. Because we are cutting a lot and it's not adjusting to the higher keys. And if we go full on and I play a low octave and a high, 
we can see where the, how the peak, you know, is a, how is adjusting the cutoff. And if I go off again, I'm gonna be doing the same thing, and it's not moving. Right, so that's, again, what it means. All right, so let's uh, talk about, I'm gonna leave this ones off, and we need to talk about the amount of contour. It's a, kind of a weird word <laughs> for this, but it's very uh, true to this synthesizer. Uh, this is going to be the modulation, the cutoff modulation. So if I maybe go right here at the bottom, and I play a key, what I want to do, I want to play a key, and I want to do something like... I want to do something like this every time I play a key. So this is frequency, uh, not frequency, this is modulation for the cutoff. Now, instead of doing this manually with the mouse, we can outsource this to this envelope. And this envelope works the same way than this. Now, the this knob, the amount of contour, is going to be how much of this modulation we are going to be applying to the cutoff. So I'm going to go down to the cutoff. So if we play a key, notice that it's pre it's cutting a lot of frequencies right so uh right here i can decide how much of the envelope we are going to be applying to the cutoff and again this works just like the other envelope i'm going to go all the way down if i play a key nothing is going to happen but what we can do we can decide a little bit of attack i'm going to go a little bit more aggressive and if i play a key we can we can see the motion right so behind the scenes, what it's doing is taking an absurd amount of time in doing just this, going like, going up, like this. Now the thing is that at this point, we just have an attack time. So it's gonna go up, and when it reaches the maximum point, it's gonna go all the way down very quickly. So we don't uh, hear a transition. So this is gonna be the decay. If I go up on the decay, it's gonna go up, and at some point, it's gonna go down, but it's gonna take some time to go down. So I'm gonna go all the way up, all the way up, you know, something like that there. It's gonna take some time to go down to whatever pitch, whatever frequency I'm playing. Now, remember that the amount of contour decides how much of this, how aggressive this is going to be. So if I do just a little bit and go down, it's gonna be very mild, right? If I go really aggressive, it's gonna be really aggressive. Now remember that you do have sustain, so the sustain is going to decide if you want to stay in some place in between and not go all the way back where you started. Uh, if I maybe let me just make it a little bit aggressive, so I'm going to be playing a key. It's going to go up, it enters the decay, and it's sustaining right here. So with no sustain, it goes all the way back to the beginning. That's the point, right? So that is the filter, you know, the cutoff. Modulation, you can decide how much you want to do. I'm going really slow, but you can you can go faster. Adjust your cutoff. And remember that you have your keyboard control now. So if you play lower keys, it's going to change how the cutoff works. And I'm doing a lot of resonance so we can see the peak movement uh, moving, but you don't need to. You know, you can go down on the resonance. Adjust the uh, amount of contour to do less. Right. So that's it. I'm going to go to a new patch and go down in volume because now we need to talk about the modulation. Now, uh, this synthesizer, and I'm talking about the, the, uh, the original one, it's, um, you can, you can do, you have access to do modulations, but it's not like, uh, modern synthesizers where you have four LFOs and three or five different envelopes. So you can do crazy sounds and crazy modulations. You don't get this here. You just get one single, um, LFO, which is the oscillator number three, and you can modulate just the pitch and you can modulate the cutoff, just like we are doing with the envelope. But in this case, you're going to be doing it with something else. I'm gonna maybe go right here to the attack. I'm gonna be playing a key. And this is what we are doing, right? So maybe I'm gonna stand right here. So what I want to do, I want to do some kind of modulation to this, but I don't want to do it with the uh, with the envelope. I want to do something like this with an LFO or with something else. So who's going to decide if we do this modulation? So it's going to be the filter modulation. If this is off, there's no modulation. So this this uh, needs to be on for uh, for us in order to do a modulation. Now the other thing is going to be who is going to be doing the modulation. So we need to go all the way right here. 
So I'm going to go no glide. We can talk about the glide in a minute. But you have your modulation mix. So this will decide who is going to be doing the modulation. And you have two choices. You have the oscillator number three. That's going to be your modulator or noise. Now, first, I'm going to do noise because it's simple. So if I play a key. Can you see that something is going on? Because there is nothing going on. So when you uh, accept or you want to do some kind of modulation, you need to use the mod wheel. So right now, nothing is happening. As I go up, you're going to start, you're going to see the noise kicking in. And this is not the noise, the noise is off. So what it's doing is that it's, uh, you know, this filter modulation, it's using the noise to do something like this to the uh, to the cut of filter. That's why it's, you know, it moves very, in a weird way random way so you need to adjust your mod wheel in order to let that modulation pass to the cut of frequency if you turn it off no modulation if we turn it on modulation now i'm going to turn this off i'm going to explain this in a minute but turn it off no modulation turn it on we are modulating with noise right so this is going to modulate the cut of i'm going to turn it off then the other thing that you can do is modulate pitch. And if I turn this on and I play a key, we can really hear that there's, there's something going on with the pitch. Well, the noise is modulating the pitch. That's why it sounds weird. Now, the thing is that uh, modulating things with just noise, eh, it's not, you know, not that fun. So what you can do, you can use the third oscillator in order to modulate the pitch or the uh, filter modulation. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go right here, turn it off, and I'm going to go back to the filter modulation. But in this case, I want to use the oscillator number three. Now, you can use a combination of both, of oscillator number three and noise. But in this case, I'm just going to go all the way to the number three. Now, if I play it, we get it. Right. So this oscillator, it's modulating the cutoff filter. Right. Then we are doing full of that modulation. So how is the third oscillator controlling the, uh, you know, using how we can use it as a, as a low flow? So it's because we are in low. When you're low, it means low frequency oscillator, LFO. Yeah, that's what it means. So we are using a triangle waveform to modulate the cut of frequency. Now, if we want to go slower, I can go down on the pitch and it will just go slower because we go down in frequency. So now it's uh, slow going up and down. We are using a triangle up and down, up and down. But we can use other waveforms. I can do this, use this and it's a ramp down, it starts very aggressively and then goes down. And that is what we get. The other one is the opposite. It goes slowly up and then it ends abruptly and starts over. Then we have the square. And the square is always like an on and off type of a thing. Off, off, on, off. The other ones are the same but are going to be shorter. It's a longer on, shorter off, and same thing. Right. You can always adjust the frequency with this. Go faster, go slower. And for now, let me go here because it's very easy to identify. You can go slower or really fast. All right. Now, remember uh, what we discussed at the, uh, the beginning with the oscillators? This button. So this button, if I play a new key, I'm going to be, you need to look right here at the keyboard. If I play a low key, the rate or how fast the modulation is going is that, all right? I'm going to play a high key. Notice that it's the same speed. It's going at the same rate. And it's because, remember, this button, it's disconnecting this oscillator from the keyboard. So this oscillator, it's not listening to the keyboard, so the speed of the LFO will not change because it's just not listening to it. Now, if we turn it on, we can still get that uh, LFO, but now, if I play a low key, it's gonna go slower. If I go uh, to a higher key, it's gonna go faster. And as I keep going up in pitch, it's gonna go faster. And you can still hear this oscillator if you wanted to, if you turn it on. But, you know, in this case, we are using it as an LFO, so you're going to put it, you know, off. So you always need to be, uh, you know, you always need to remember 
what you're going, you're going to do with this one. If it's off, not controlled by the keyboard, or if it's on, you're controlling the speed with your keys. Now, there is a different aspect to this, and in this case, I want to modulate the speed of the LFO with the keys, all right? So we are using low. So it means that whatever frequency we are doing is going really slow. That's why it's a low frequency oscillator and we can hear them moving up and down. When we go to the other ranges, now it's gonna go super fast. So we don't hear the movement. We can even go slower right here, but it's, again, it's still too fast. And we cannot hear the changes. So, since it's going too fast, this is still can be used as a sound effect because we are modulating the cut of frequency so fast that we cannot tell the difference. Now, what is really cool is going to happen when we uh, modulate the oscillators. Now, with this one, we modulate pitch. If we go to low, it's going to be, you know, that type of thing. And if I turn this off, now we are not... We are uh, controlling the speed with this knob, with this one, with the uh, frequency, and not with the keys. And we can do that, we know. But when this is on, and we go out of the low, now it's gonna go super fast. So what uh, we are uh, doing, we are entering into the principles of uh, frequency modulation. Whatever we are doing right here is modulating the pitch of the oscillators, the other oscillators, really, really fast. So since we can, it's super fast, we cannot tell the difference. So we get a tone like this. And I can go faster, and it will change the relationship of how, we, how it works and how it sounds. And we can get really cool sounds, right? Remember, altering this is going to change the sound as well. And changing the frequency is going to affect it as well. Let me go a little bit lower. Uh, a little bit more noise noticeful. Notice that when we are on a different pitch and we are not at center, we get that type of sound. But when we are closer, and I'm gonna do zero, when we are closer to the same pitch, we get a more musical sound, let's say. If I go down on the mod wheel, you're gonna start noticing the difference. If I go maybe to 32s, up, and so we get that sound. Now you can still uh, mix it with the noise, and we are doing a little bit of both. The oscillator 3 and the noise with the pitch, and if we, uh, we want to go crazy, we can go to the cut of frequencies and modulate this and modulate the pitch at the same time and we can start, you know, getting call, call different sounds. So I'm gonna go back to the new, go down in volume. So we have something like this. We still need to cover a couple of more, uh, a couple more things. Right here you have your tuning. So this is again something that you get on the original one. On this one, it's a it's an A tone. So it's an it's an A, and it's just a tone. Why do you get this? Well, if you if I play a key, well, let me just disable this, and I'm just going to use use this one. So this is you had this in the on the original one, so, but because you can tune whatever you have right here to the A, right? But this is something very useful on the original one because it's analog and sometimes it will go out of tune. So you will use it in that, in, in that case. Now, then you have your glide. Now your glide, and this is something simple. Uh, when you have a glide, this means that when you play new keys, this is going to smoothly change to that key. So this works mostly, and it works better on mono synthesizer. In this case, since this is mono, we are going to be talking about the polyphony right here, but right now, if we have glide, I play, play a key, it's going to kind of a slide or glide to that note. If I play a new key, it's going to glide to that note. And 
If you go really aggressive on this, it's gonna be a little bit more obvious. Now this works because the glide control right here, it's on. You can turn it off. And if you turn it off, you just get no glide. So then on the bottom, you have your pitch. And I believe I don't need to explain this. You can go up in pitch or you can go down in pitch. And when you release it, it's gonna go back to the original, right? Pretty simple. Now, on this case, you can go right there and select how much up and how much down. You can even go 24 semitones up, which is crazy. Right? So I'm gonna start with a new patch and go down in volume because it's gonna get loud. Now, uh, by default, the Mach, the original synthesizer, it's a mono synth. You can play one single key at a time. You don't have voices, which means you cannot play chords. Now, Cherry Audio, uh, what they do, uh, they um, they create, you know, recreations of different synths. In this case, it's the Mach, uh, but they st always stay uh, true to the original unit, the original hardware unit. And in this case, uh, they al always add something, you know, something a little bit more modern. And in the case of this one, that what they did, they added voices. Now, on the original one, again, it's a mono synth. You cannot play a chord. If I play a key and I play a new key, nothing is going to happen. Notice that... We get no change. Now on this one, we can do two, four, uh, it's gonna be eight, yes, eight, and then 16. So you have 16 voices. It means that you can, one, two, three, four, you can play a chord. And of course, if you adjust the frequencies and everything else, and whatever sound that you're doing, you're gonna be getting cool sounds. Right, so that's it. You can just, you know, choose the amount of voices. So 16 is just more than enough. Maybe sometimes four, it's more than enough, but it's a cool addition. So we are pretty much done with this synthesizer. This is what this uh, synth can do, and it can do a lot. Now you have a limiter right here. Now I forgot to tell you, you can turn it off, but it's already pretty, pretty loud. So, you know, but you can use that limiter. Um, but that's it. I'm not gonna go through all the options we have right here. This is something that you get on, uh, with Cherry Audio. And uh, again, go through the presets. Uh, this looks simple. Even even with the, all the limitations that you get, you know, in terms of modulation sources, uh, you can still create a million sounds. That's why this thing, it's a classic. All right, so if you learned something, if you liked this uh, tiny little guide, uh, remember to like and subscribe. And if you, want, if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can go to the links at the description. You have PayPal, you have Patreon, and you have a YouTube thanks now. All right, so see you on the next one.